guys, and welcome to Cooking with Remy. Let's get cooking. You guys, it is finally here. I've been wanting to do this for so long for you. Over a year ago, I promised this whole thing, and honestly, I realized that I could not do it by myself. So I have a wonderful team with me here today, and I am finally bringing to you guys a full-blown cooking show on this channel. Also, officially, there's a website for Cooking with Remy. It just went live. You guys can check it out, linked down below. We've been working so, 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 so hard on it. There's recipes on there already, and then weekly, we're gonna be dropping new recipes for you guys. So if you wanna try cooking, if you wanna learn a new skill, check it out. Also, stay tuned. There's going to be so much more cooking content on this channel. So if you guys like that, get excited. Give this video a big thumbs up. In today's video, I thought I would start with my absolute favorite Korean comfort dishes. Things that I've been eating my entire life that I love so, so much. You guys love when I cook Korean food. So if you guys like it, cook along with me. That about wraps that up. So check out the website. Stay tuned for more videos. Subscribe and let's get cooking. So first up, we're going to be making one of my favorite dishes to ever exist. It's called dakboki, which is Korean spicy rice cakes. There's like fish cake and egg eggs and things in it and it's delicious. And if you like chewy things, this is the recipe for you. Next up, we have jajangmyeon, which is black bean noodles. It's a Chinese Korean fusion dish with like zucchini, there's pork in it, and I put a little fun spin that I think you're gonna love. Lastly, we have Korean fried chicken, which is so delicious and crunchy and it's perfect because you can put whatever sauce you like on it. Today we're doing soy garlic and I'm serving it with Korean pickled radish. We are first gonna begin by making the sauce. I'm gonna take gochujang, which is a Korean pepper paste, which actually is more sweet than spicy, I would say, which it doesn't look like it at all, but it really is. Soy sauce. Oh my God, that ASMR. I can feel it. <laughs> Sesame oil, chili oil, which is so good. Sugar and gochugaru, which is Korean spicy chili flakes. Right in there. Lastly, I've got six cloves of garlic. I will say you really only need like a teaspoon, but I, as we all know, like garlic. So, oh, it smells good. Right in there. We're gonna give it a good stir and combine everything together and then we can move on to the next step. It smells so good. Mm. Here I have a large shallow pot. I'm heating this over medium high heat and I'm going to first start off by cooking my ribeye. You can use whatever meat you want in this. You can do seafood, you can do filet mignon, literally whatever you want or omit the meat. I'm using ribeye because I like the fat in the dish. Spray oil. Sound. The meat's almost cooked. I'm gonna add salt and pepper. Oh, it smells so good already. Ooh! Okay, meat is cooked like 75% of the way. I'm gonna take it out now, and then it'll finish cooking when we put it back in. It smells so good. Into the same pan, I'm gonna add in my onions. Ugh, the sizzle sound never gets old. Let that cook for a couple minutes, and then throw in my cabbage and my garlic, because the onions take the longest to cook. Now I have six cups of water. You can use stock if you want. And I'm gonna bring this to a boil. And I'm also gonna add in that sauce that we made earlier right into here and let it fully dissolve together. While this dissolves, a fun fact about myself in this dish, I used to go to different like potluck family Bible study. It was a mishmash of things. And my aunt would always bring her tteokbokki and it was my absolute favorite dish ever. And they sell really great like pre-packaged ones at the Korean grocery store and when I I first moved out on my own for the first time ever. That's pretty much all I ever ate was just the pre-made packs of them. And then when I found out I could make it myself, I got extra excited and I've developed this recipe and it is seriously foolproof. Our liquid soup base has come to a rolling boil. I'm now going to take God's gift to planet Earth, which is rice cakes. These are the typical rice cake that we use for tteokbokki, which is like a little flat cylinder chunky guy. You can use whatever kind that you like. I got these fresh from the store. I just soak these in warm water for like 10 minutes to re-soften them up and I'm just going to add them straight into the liquid and hopefully not burn myself. I will use a ladle. We're gonna lower these into the soup and it's going to absorb all the liquid and get really nice and thick and delicious and they get chewy and it's so good. All the rice cakes are in our pot and they're cooking on, honestly this is on high heat but this little guy's working extra hard. So if you're on your normal stove, do like medium high or so. Once it comes to a boil, lower the heat and we're gonna let it simmer 
and that's what's gonna thicken the sauce and then we'll throw everything else in and it'll be done. I moved the pot over to the stove because this little guy was having trouble heating everything through. Our little rice cakes are taking a nice bath in the jacuzzi. They're already softening up. If you can see, they're getting plump and juicy. I'm gonna boil this for like another couple minutes. It should hit the boiling point and then we'll drop it down to a simmer. So we let the rice cakes simmer for about 20 minutes and now it's like this beautiful, luscious, thick sauce and it's time to add in all the rest of the ingredients. Now, for the ingredients, I'm gonna add back in that cabbage and onion that I cooked up earlier. We're also gonna add in the steak that we cooked and I have this going at like a low right now and it's bubbling and it's so yummy. Quite possibly my favorite parts of this dish. We have a variety of fish cakes and hard boiled eggs. Obviously I already cooked them already. You don't have to do this, but this is like my favorite. As a kid, this is what I looked forward to most. As we all know, I love eggs. So this is, I think, why I love it so much. So you just stir this all together and we're gonna let it cook all together for another like five, 10 minutes or so. And then it's done and it looks so good. So our duck pokey is done. I'm going to garnish with green onions and with sesame seeds. You can put cheese on top. You can put whatever you'd like, but I like the freshness and the color that this adds. <gasps> so pretty. Sesame seeds. That looks so good. It is officially taste test time. I have here my beautiful concoction. I'm gonna serve some for myself in a bowl and get all of my favorite parts. You have to get a little bit of everything in here. I haven't had this in super long. Mm. I hate when I watch a cooking show and they don't taste test, so obviously we have to do so. One, two, three. Mmm, -hmm. it's so good. I killed it, try it out, foolproof, I'm telling you. Next recipe. Okay. Moving on to recipe number two. We have jajangmyeon, which is my go-to drunk meal. I crave this at all times of the day. I have a medium saucepan here over medium heat, and I'm going to take some vegetable oil, put it in my little pan, then this is the star ingredient. This is jajang, which is black bean paste. It looks like tar, I would not recommend eating this on its own, but it is so salty and adds so much flavor to the dish. So we're actually gonna fry the paste, which is kind of a different tactic, but it tastes really good. So I'm gonna fry this in the pan. Ooh, okay, it's getting bubbly. It's a little hard to work with. It's kind of like glue, but just be patient. Lastly, to counteract the saltiness of the paste, I'm gonna add some sugar right in, and we're gonna fry this for a couple minutes on this heat with the oil and just stir it all together. Now I have this giant wok that was gifted to me by Chrissy Teigen and Cravings. I love you so much, thank you so much. So I have this going on medium heat and I have here in a little bowl thing, pork belly in which I sliced up. Traditionally, this recipe is made with ground pork, but I like pork belly more. I cut my pork belly up into thin slices, added in a couple tablespoons of mirin to start marinating the meat about 10 minutes ago, a couple tablespoons of ginger, and now into this hot, hot wok. I'm gonna throw this in, no oil or anything. We're gonna let the fat render and cook in here. Wait for the sizzle. Wow! <laughs> Taking the pork out of the pot, I let it get really nice and brown and crispy. Ooh, that looks bomb. Next step, I also already have a large pot of boiling water going on in the back so I can throw our noodles in and then everything can come together very quickly. I've got my pan here. I'm gonna throw some oil down on this. Oil on here. I now have my chopped onion and chopped zucchini. I'm gonna throw this in. Ooh, and let this cook and get nice and soft. Our onions and our zucchini are cooking down. I have the boiling water here. I've got some beautiful knife cut noodles here. These fresh noodles are absolutely unbeatable. If you can't find these, you can do ramen, you can make your own noodles, whatever you'd like, but these are so chewy and perfect for a dish like this. So I'm just gonna throw these in and these are fresh. So they cook in a few minutes or so really, really, really quickly. We're gonna make a lot because I'm gonna eat a lot. <laughs> I'm just gonna gently stir and then let them cook for a few minutes, strain them, and we'll get back to the sauce. Okay, my veggies are like halfway done cooking or so. They're starting to caramelize, get sweet. There's like a nice brown color on them. I'm gonna Add in the garlic. I have five cloves of garlic here. Again, don't have to do five cloves, but I am. We're gonna stir this up and also add our pork back in to let everything get really crispy and cook all together. Now I'm gonna add in my chopped cabbage. This cooks really quickly and it's really small, so I'm gonna add this in last so it doesn't get mushy and overcook. It's been a few minutes. Now I'm gonna take my paste mixture that I made earlier, throw it back in, gorgeous. And this is gonna melt down and coat all of our veggies. You just wanna let it slowly cook and coat everything in the pan. Our sauce is sizzling. Do you hear that? 
Oh, yeah. That's some ASMR right there. It looks beautiful. I'm now gonna add some chicken stock. You can use water, you can use anchovy stock. That's, I feel like, traditional in Korean cooking, but I like chicken stock. Gonna stir this around. This is gonna soften everything even more together. I drain the noodles. I put some cold water to stop the cooking process because I don't want my noodles to be mushy. And now we're gonna let this come together. So my sauce is actually thicker than it normally is, so I'm going to use a little bit less slurry, but depending on how thin or thick your sauce is, we're going to mix some cornstarch and some water and this is called a slurry. You add this to your sauces and it thickens everything up. Throw that in. Do you hear it? Yeah. I'm gonna add a little bit of my slurry again because mine's a little bit on the thicker side. Feel free to add more or less. And this quickly is gonna come together in a couple minutes. Just keep stirring, keep stirring. And then we're gonna serve it up so fast. Time to serve up. I've got my noodles here and I'm gonna put them in my little bowl. Pro tip, take tongs. Spin, spin, spin. You get a little mound perfectly in the middle. Ooh, I can't wait. Noodles are set. I'm gonna take my delicious, luscious, thick sauce and just spoon it right on top. I like a lot of sauce. Sometimes I even just eat the sauce on its own on the side and then eat the noodles plain. I do that with spaghetti too. Is that weird? I love it because it's really quick to make and all the veggies get really soft together with the like really salty black bean. If you wanna be low carb, you can do some zoodles maybe. Actually, that'd be really good. I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna garnish with some little green onions right on top. Ooh, it's so pretty. And of course, sesame seeds right on top. And there you have it, homemade jajangmyeon. Ooh, did you hear that noise? Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, that's so good. You can't eat this gracefully, but it's bomb. <laughs> All right, let's make some fried chicken. On to the last recipe. I'm gonna start by taking vegetable oil and pouring a lot of it into a large pot that we're gonna use for frying. A lot of oil. Oh, I guess we're just gonna use it all, actually. There we go. And I'm gonna heat this on the stove to 350 degrees. Oh God, it's heavy. Moving on to the sauce, I have a small little, oh my God, there was a tag on there. So we have a saucepan here on the little burner. We're gonna start by making the honey soy garlic sauce for the chicken. You can do whatever sauce you want on the chicken. You can keep them plain, but this adds a nice little Asian flair. So I have my burner going on low. I'm gonna add in my butter. Ooh -hoo -hoo. Over here I have 10 cloves of garlic and a little knob of ginger, and I'm just going to chop it all together. I like to leave it a little chunkier for this sauce specifically, like that. Ooh, looks good. So I'm gonna melt the butter down and throw this in and let it become nice and fragrant before we add everything else in. Once everything comes together, I'm going to add in three tablespoons of hot honey. This is my favorite hot honey to ever exist. It's from a company called AR's Hot Southern Honey. I will leave them linked down below. It's incredible. If not, regular honey works. You can add some chili flakes in here if you wanna make it a little spicy. I'm just gonna eyeball one two, three tablespoons of this, and this gives it that sweetness, along with a little bit of sugar. Add that in. Ooh, it smells so good. Okay, gonna stir this until it becomes well combined all together. Garlic honey. Mm. Our mixture is coming to a boil, which means that it's starting to caramelize. I'm going to add in our sesame oil, our chili oil, and our soy sauce, i.e. Honey, soy, garlic. Ooh, it looks so good. Okay, I'm gonna let this go for a minute or two, and in the meantime, I'm going to prepare another slurry. Again, this is what's gonna thicken the sauce to really coat the chicken. So, I've got my little cornstarch, add it to my water, give it a little mixture till it becomes cloudy. Looks like milk, honestly. Throw it in here, and then cut the heat really, really, really low, and we're just gonna let this simmer while we prep the chicken. Moving on to the chicken. This recipe goes really quickly. I have my chicken wings, chicken wings, over here, and I've pat them dry. I have a mixture of drums and flats. You wanna make sure they're extra, extra, extra dry so that all of our delicious breading mixture can stick. You can do a breading if you want. Obviously, there's like buttermilk fried chicken, tons of different fried chicken variations. I personally am a fan of just using cornstarch. It makes the chicken so light and crispy and airy. So, that's what I'm using today. I'm just gonna eyeball this into my little bowl or big bowl. Um, <laughs> Maybe use a spoon to measure, but you just need enough to coat the chicken, so there we go. Now I'm gonna season the cornstarch mixture. I haven't used a ton of seasonings in this video thus far, just because a lot of Korean things like the jajang paste and gochujang has like a lot of salt already. This doesn't, so I'm gonna add a lot of salt, a lot of pepper, paprika. I usually just eyeball seasonings, but I would say like a tablespoon of all the seasonings and then like a couple teaspoons of salt and pepper. Measure with love. 
I'm gonna mix my cornstarch mixture very well. Then I'm gonna take my chicken. Again, pat dried, just throw it right into the cornstarch, flip it around a few times. It's got like a very interesting feeling. So I'm gonna take the chicken, just going to roll it in the cornstarch, get all up in the crevices, and then pat off the excess. And this is gonna create a really nice crust with the skin to make it crunchy and light and airy. They're good to go. Throw out whatever you just touched to be safe, and let's fry them up. Once we've ensured that our oil is hot enough, we're gonna add our chicken in and do not overcrowd it, otherwise it'll drive the temperature down and then your chicken won't fully cook and then you'll get salmonella and then that's not good. We are almost done, guys. We have our wings here that look so crispy. Wait, I gotta get a little ASMR on here. Is that good? <laughs> They're extra crispy, extra crunchy, really light and airy still, so I'm gonna throw them into my bowl here. Oh, it sounds so good. And then I have my sauce, which has thickened and then cooled, and I'm going to pour this. Ooh, yeah, get some of that garlic. Give them a good mix. Ooh. <laughs> oh my God, they look really, really good. These are, I would say, very, very mild. Maybe like a little kick from that hot honey and the chili oil, but pretty sweet. Like the sweet definitely bounces out with the spicy. But again, you can totally leave out any of the spice and just do like the soy garlic honey. To plate, we have a bed of green onions. This is done by shaving them and then putting them in ice cold water so they curl up like this. Ooh hoo hoo. Place our wings on top. Oh my God, they look so good. <laughs> Last but not least, of course, sesame seeds on top to garnish. Ooh, wait, I have an idea. <gasps> oh, I just came up with an idea. This is what cooking is about. I'm going to instead put furikake on top, which is like a sesame seed seaweed mixture. There's like a little sweetness in there right on top and minced dried garlic because why not? Ooh, a little crunch. All right guys, that wraps up the first episode of Cooking with Remy. Thank you so much for watching if you made it this far. This was so much fun. I can't wait to do more episodes with you guys. Be sure to comment down below any recipes that I should try out in another episode of Cooking with Remy and I'm gonna sign you off with a taste test. Mm, mm, bye. Mm, 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 mm.